sword drew it and struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear and the servant's name was Machias. Mach Everybody want to pronounce it. And then Jesus looks at Peter. Now this is on his way to the garden of Gethsemane where he prays. And he's, so he cuts his ear off. And here's his right ear laying on the ground. Jesus reached down, picks his ear up, and places it back on his head. Then he goes on and Jesus said to Peter, put your sword into the sheath. The sheath means that what holds the sword. Put it back in there. Put it back. Now if it was a gun, he said, put your, your gun back in your scabbard. Amen. But he said, put the sword back up. Why would he say that? He said, because that I shall I not drink of the cup which my father has given me. Isn't that amazing? Shall I not drink of the cup that my father has given me? What was that cup? Well, it was the natural cup, but he's symbolizing something. He's symbolizing his, his, his death. He's symbolizing the thing that he had suffered all of his life. Now he said, I'm going to drink of this cup of suffering. I'm going to suffer. How many of you know the Bible said that when Jesus actually prayed, he said great drops of blood fell off his face? That man suffered because he was born, remember this, Jesus was born the Son of God, but he came into the world and took on a human body. And he perhaps in his own body didn't want to die because he had, a, he had to overcome all things. So here he says, put up your sword. Put up your sword because I have to suffer this. I'm going to go through this for a particular reason. I am going to give my life for all mankind of the world. In Matthew 20, let's see there real quickly and we'll get right on through this. I hope you're writing it down. Because in Matthew 20, and our brother talked about going to Thailand. But I pray he doesn't have to suffer over there. It will be only for God. So he said in Matthew 20, verse 22. Here with Jesus now, a woman had come up and said, Master, I got something I want to ask you. And he said, what's that? He said, I, won't, I have two sons. You can go back and read it. And said, I have two sons. And said, I would like for each one of my sons to sit on your, one on your left hand and one on your right hand when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said, it's not me to give. He said, it's not, it's not me to give. And he said, first of all, he said, you know not what you ask. Why would he, what a particular question. She's asking him something, and he said, you know not what you ask. How many times in your lifetime have you said, Lord, or you've asked of something, and you, and you just couldn't wait? Most of us in our life, I, my wife and I just paid off our car. And I said, well, I, I drove a, a 206 Lincoln, and I didn't run her. I rode her a 206 Lincoln down in Phoenix. And I said, Lord, I'd like to have a car like this. And I said this morning to somebody, I said, I know not what I ask. I'm almost 72 and I don't want another six years, five years of payment. I just paid one off. <laughs> Amen. Now, if somebody wants to buy me one, I'll take it. But I don't want to go down and, and, uh, and uh, have to buy my own and worry about five more years of paying for it. But sometimes, you know, you get things that you don't get, you ask for, but after you get them, you wish to God you'd never seen them or heard them or thought about them. How many of you have been like that? So here's Peter asking, this woman is asking something. And she said, wait a minute, you really don't know what, I, what you're asking. For you don't ask, <clears throat> excuse me, for you are, are you able? He asked the question, are you able to drink of the cup? Now was that a natural cup? No. That was not a natural cup. But he said, are you able to drink of the cup, now, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> that I am about to drink? What was that cup that he was about to drink, Brother Richard? It was a cup of sorrow. Jesus' sorrow. Jesus' sorrow. Then he said, and he was suffering. For what reason? He was suffering because he was going to die. He was going to die. He was fixing to get beat within an inch of his life. Many, many stripes he received on his back. 
taking that crown of thorns upon his head, blood running down his eyebrows and down to his vesture, being beaten, smitten, rejected, spit on, cursed, all of those things that he was going to go through with. Are we willing this morning to be beaten like Jesus was? Are we willing to suffer like Jesus suffered? Are we willing to go through what Jesus went through? When we proclaim, Lord, I want to be like you, you better watch what you're praying. Lord, I, you know, because we, Brother Richard, that can't open us up to some real sufferings, some real problems. So Jesus asked these people, he said, are you able, asked this woman, said, are you able to drink of the, uh, to drink what I'm about to drink? What was that? Suffering, trials, tribulation, giving his life. He said, and I am about, and said, and to be baptized. Listen to this. And to be baptized. Isn't it amazing? When you think about baptism, you think about water baptism. But Jesus is talking about the baptism of suffering. You see, if you develop it in God, you're going to, have, you're going to suffer sometime or another in your life. How many of us in our lifetime have gone through things and we've said, God, how much more of this can I take? I have. I've said, Lord, how much more of this can I take? And he said, just find out. And he poured a little more on me. <laughs> you know, he said, I, I, let me see how much more you can take. Well, what it is that that cup that he said, now you're going to be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. Well, <clears throat> if you understand that, Christ suffered. In Matthew 26, he said, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. In Matthew 26, 38 and 39. Here now he's, he's fixing to go to the cross. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then he, he, and, uh, he has the last supper, and he goes over there, and he says, Then my soul is exceedingly sorrowful. Why was his soul exceedingly sorrowful? Because he's fixing to die. He, he had a natural body, 33 and a half years old, approximately, history says. And he begins to preach when he's 30, never married, never had a family, as you and I have or the opportunity to have. And he had all of these things, yet he loved life. He loved life. And he said, now here it is. I realize I've got to die, but I'm not wanting to die. Remember when he prayed three times? That meant that he was not ready to die. When he went down to the cross, and he, when he went there and he prayed three times, Father, let this cup pass from me. And he went back to his disciples and he said, won't you pray with me just one hour? Most of us don't, most of you don't pray 15 minutes a week, much less an hour at a time. So he said, now he went down to pray and he went back to pray again. And he said, we 